Hi, this is Kailana with Handmade by Kailana, and today I want to make a Halloween style 50s dress. It's finally October and Halloween is just around the corner. It's one of my favorite holidays. I love DIYing costumes and decorations. I love everything about it. So this year it's going to be a little bit more special because my sister's getting married during Halloween weekend and she's going to have a gothic inspired wedding. She's going to be wearing a fabulous black gown. And she invited the guests to wear something spooky, a costume, or anything gothic inspired. And I want to DIY my entire outfit. I want to make a 50 style Halloween dress with a big petticoat and uh, I want to make some hair accessories. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to make. And I really love that kind of vintage aesthetic. I think um, that fit and flare type of style is going to look great on my body type. And so let me talk to you about what I'm planning on doing. I want that iconic 50s party dress silhouette. A really fitted bodice with a large circle skirt with a petticoat underneath. I found this amazing fabric online, a pink and black Halloween print. And it's not an obnoxious neon pink, but a pretty muted blush pink. One of my favorite colors, and black and blush pink are the colors of my sister's wedding, so it's perfect. Unfortunately, I could only find this print in a quilting cotton. I would have preferred a type of fabric that would be better suited to sewing apparel like rayon or poplin, but I couldn't find any. But I'm really happy with the print. It is very cool with cameos, cobwebs, skulls, spiders, a murder of crows, and these really pretty flowers. So I went through my pattern stash to see if I could find something close to what I had in mind for my dress. I found this Butterick pattern by Gertie. It has a lot of the features that I want for this dress. A square neckline, one of my favorite necklines. It reminds me of a fantasy vintage princess dress. It also has a large circle skirt. I picked up this pattern a few years ago and there are two main reasons why I haven't made it. First, there's a zipper down the front, which was not obvious from the picture on the front of the pattern when I bought it. It totally kills my vintage princess vibe. A zipper down the front, no. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to take that out and put the zipper in the back. And second, it has boning, which I kind of find intimidating because I haven't done that before, but I, that's exactly what I want for this dress, so I'm going to figure it out. Some other changes I'm going to make for this dress are to remove the ruffle at the bottom of the dress and to change up the sleeves. Short sleeves are not exactly ideal for a wedding that's going to be outside in the evening at the end of October. Also, I love a dramatic sleeve, so my plan is to lengthen the sleeve down to my, the bottom of my arms, create gathers by the wrist, and have a long cuff. To achieve this, I found this other pattern in my stash and it kind of has the type of sleeve I'm looking for, puffy at the top and the bottom at the wrist. The only thing is I'm going to have to shorten that sleeve a bit, maybe take off about three inches so that I can have a long cuff instead. So the thing that I really wanted to make a twall of is the bodice because that I wanted to be really close fitting. A circle skirt, it really doesn't matter. That's going to fit. So I really needed to make sure that the waist and the chest were as fitted as possible. And the thing with the big four patterns is that they tend to run big. So, and the measurements are not, they don't work with my body type. They're not proportional to what I need. So there was a two size difference between my chest and my waist. And so it's really hard to kind of grade between those two sizes. So I decided, okay, well, if I'm gonna make a 12, I'll just make the chest size, which was the smaller size, and see how it went. So I made my 12 of the bodice, um, and I closed up this front seam because I did not like the idea of having an invisible zipper there. I need to make sure that this line stays straight. I put a line of stitching around here so I can see how far it will come down. So I'm going to, I'm gonna put in some pins so I can get more of a visual of what it will look like. But I do need to pinch off some of this because the shoulder is off 
and so is here. So let's see if I bring it more to the apex, brought it over about that much. Let's see how that looks. And I want to keep the waist the same, so maybe do a dart to about here. Now that I have the front of the bodice sorted out, I need to work on the back. To add the zipper in the back, I just cut the back piece down the middle into two pieces. I expected that I would need to add in seam allowance, but that turned out not to be necessary. Even though I went with a smaller size and my waist was supposed to be two sizes bigger, I had to take in the entire bodice quite a bit, including the waist. I'm glad I made a toile even though I hate making them, because obviously I needed to make a lot of changes. After measuring the back on my dress form, I sewed it up halfway so I could try it it on and then made my final changes. So I cut out my fabric pieces um, for the bodice. I have the outer lining, the inner lining. I put um, interfacing on the fabric, um, the outer fabric of my bodice. I sewed up the fabric for the bodice and then using the same fabric for the lining, I sewed that up too. I'm going to be inserting the boning onto the lining of the bodice. So I ironed down the seam allowances, including the neckline, armhole, and waist, so I could accurately measure how long my boning needed to be without going into the seam line. The plastic boning comes in a fabric tube. All I had to do is lay down the boning on each of my vertical seam allowances, except of course the back where I'm going to insert my zipper, and then I added an extra inch to the length of the boning. I made the cut and then ironed the boning flat. Next, I pulled out the plastic boning from the fabric tube and cut off that extra inch from the plastic only. And then I rounded both ends of the plastic so it won't poke through the fabric. Then I inserted the plastic back into the fabric tube and used that extra inch of fabric tubing to fold over on the top and the bottom of the boning. Then I just need to stitch down each side of the boning. The fabric boning is wide enough so you should be able to easily sew it down without hitting the boning. This was the first time I've ever used boning in a garment and it totally intimidated me. I've had that boning because there's another dress that I wanted to make that has boning in it. And it's been in my stash for probably a good two years, maybe, maybe um, because I, was, I wasn't sure how to use it, but I put on a couple of YouTube videos. And actually when I started doing it, it was super easy. I mean, I had no problems. I was worried about like getting um, the needle to go on the sides of the boning without breaking it. Um, and it was super easy. There was, I had no problems with it. I attached the front of the bodice to the lining of the bodice around the neckline. The only tricky part was navigating around the top of the boning, but I just went really slow around those parts and it was fine. Next, I'm going to work on the sleeves. I put in my gathering stitches on the top and bottom of the sleeve and sewed up the side. I ended my stitches three inches from the bottom of the sleeve so I could create my vent. I then ironed my seam allowances open. Then I'm going to sew up the vent, go up, across, then down again. So starting at the bottom of one side, I make my stitching line about half an inch from the iron edge, so I'm catching that seam allowance in my stitches. I'm going to go up three and a half inches up the side of the sleeve, so there's a half inch above the top of the vent. Then I'm going to go over to the other side by an inch, then sew down the other side. At each corner, I'm going to back stitch to strengthen the corner. And as I turn the fabric, I'm just lifting my presser foot, leaving the needle in as I pivot the fabric so I can have a nice continuous line of stitching. Now my vent is complete. Now I need to work on my cuff. I'm going to try to copy this cuff from a dress I already own. I like the gathered sleeve, the long cuff, the elastic loops, and cute buttons. To make the cuff, I drew this pattern. I want my finished cuff to be 3.5 inches, so that is going to be the height. The width is the measurement of my wrist plus two inches. Then I added 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to the top and bottom of my cuff. I added an inch of seam allowance on one side to give it more stability for my buttons. And then 5 eighths of an inch on the other side. I cut out two pieces of the fashion fabric and one piece of the interfacing for each cuff. 
I attach the interfacing to the outside piece. I finish the sides of the cuff and the bottom and I'm going to serge together the top of the cuff. I'm going to understitch the seam allowance to the inside of the cuff. Before I attach the cuff to the sleeve, I want to sew in my elastic loops so they will be encased in the side of the cuff when I eventually sew that up. To figure out where to place them, I drew in the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance on the side of the cuff with a pencil. I then folded that over so I could get a sense of how far the elastic loop would extend. Then I needed to measure out where to place each of my loops. I'm going to put a loop 5 8 of an inch from the top and bottom of the cuff and then put a final loop in the middle. I'm hand sewing the loops in just into the seam allowance of one side of the cuff. After putting in my three elastic loops, I can start gathering the bottom of my sleeve so I can attach the cuff. Before actually sewing the cuff onto the sleeve, I went back to my example sleeve to ensure that I was going to be putting the elastic loops and the buttons on the correct side for each sleeve. It looks like the buttons go closer to the body, so that's how I'm going to do it. For this part, I had to think really hard about the construction here to make sure I was getting it right. I'm going to take the wrong side of the fabric on my sleeve and connect that to the right side of the inner lining piece of my cuff. Ultimately, I want the right side of the fabric on both my lining and the front of my cuff to show, and the sleeve will be sandwiched in between. When I'm pinning the cuff to the sleeve, I'm going to leave the 5 8 seam allowance and the 1 inch seam allowance of the sides of the cuff free on either side of the sleeve. We'll sew those up later. Now I have evenly spaced my gathers and pinned everything together. We just need to take it to the sewing machine and sew it up. So this happened. The bottom thread keeps on getting tangled. I have tried everything to fix it. I have re-threaded the machine, I've used a new bobbin, a different size needle, and nothing is helping. And this keeps on happening. I've tried sewing up some scrap material just to make sure the machine is sewing fine, and it is, it's not the machine. I think the surged edge is getting caught on the feed dogs. I'm going to try to sew slower or maybe in sections, or figure out another way to put the material through the machine so the searched edge is not near the feed dogs. I'm gonna try to figure it out. This is so frustrating. I'm just going to have to stop and hand sew this side and hope that I'll be able to machine sew the rest of this. Next, I tried to sew up the sides of the cuff but had the same problem. So we're just gonna skip over all of that so editing Kailana doesn't scream. I hand sewed both sides of the cuff, turned it over, hand sewed down the other side of the cuff and added the buttons. I then did it all over again and attached both sleeves to the bodice. After all that, I tried that thing on and the sleeves were too short. They came up to about here. And so, you know, because they had given me so many problems, I had to like sleep on it because at that moment I just wanted to throw the darn dress out. Um, but <laughs> the next morning, um, I kind of came back to it and was like, okay, I'm just gonna redraft the wristband and make it long. And, um, you know, it might come out even better. So what I did was I made the wristband actually the length of my forearm so that it was puffy. And this time I tried that sucker on so many times, like every uh, point of the way as I attached one side to the other, I kept on, you know, making sure it was good. And I think it actually came out much better. Um, let me show you my lovely cuff. Look how long and lovely that is. I had to get more buttons, um, but I think it kind of gives it more of a Victorian um, look, um, which I kind of am obsessed with. So I think I think it was what is Bob Ross say? A happy accident. Actually, it wasn't a happy accident at all. It was a horrible accident. Um, but you know, after I fixed it, I'm happier with the way it looks. And it's actually much more comfortable because, um, it was a little tight before on parts and way too loose on others. And this time around, I put that sucker on the whole time. And as I, um, put on the buttons, I made sure that it was super comfortable, the whole, you know, 
as it was sitting and it's a little even a little longer which I love because I like my sleeves to be a little long so it worked out now my bodice is complete, so I'm gonna work on the skirt and the pockets. In my opinion, the major advantage of sewing your own clothes is putting large, deep pockets into absolutely everything. I drafted a simple pocket piece and made sure it extended into the waistline. That prevents the pocket from being droopy and pulling at the side of your skirt. This is also the reason why I put a bit of interfacing on the side of the pocket pieces. I cut two pairs of the pocket pieces from my fabric. I attached a pocket piece to each side of the front skirt, right sides together, and the corresponding side of the pocket to the sides of the back skirt pieces. After I sewed them together, I pushed out the pocket pieces from the skirt and understitched. Now I'm going to create one of the pockets by placing the front skirt piece with the attached pocket against the back skirt piece with the pocket right sides together. I'm going to start at the waistline and sew down on the outside of the pocket going around and then end by coming in 5 eighths of an inch into the skirt and back stitch. Then I'm going to come up from the bottom of the skirt and sew the skirt sides together making sure my stitches cross over the place where I back stitched at the bottom of the pocket. Then I'm going to go to the top of the skirt, stitch down 3 inches with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So after I put in my pockets, I did my gathering stitches for my skirt and then I attached it to the bodice. Now let me tell you what happened when I attached this skirt to the bodice. Um, you know, I had done, I was trying to be so good doing everything I was supposed to do. I put in my two gathering stitches. I used a lot of pins to pin it to the front of my bodice and then did a basting stitch so that I could remove all of my pins before going over to the serger. So when I went over to the serger, I was halfway through the waistline and then I hear this horrible sound like metal on metal and something comes flying at my face and I look at my serger and the blade is broken and the thing that was flying at my face was the broken blade um so what happened was um you know after I had done my basting stitch I had removed all the pins but one of the pins had slipped in to one of the gathers just a little bit and so I didn't see it and so when I put it through the serger the blade hit it and so it broke the blade uh so that was like oh, <laughs> that really was like oh I was just like this dress is like gonna be the death of me um literally but uh it worked out I had to I didn't have a replacement blade, so what I did was I cut down the seam allowance and then put it through with the blade down, and it worked out. Um, but yeah, this dress has put me through some things. Um, and then the last thing I did was I put in the visible zip. Um, you know, that can be one of the hardest things, but this one, no problem. Um, it is nicely sandwiched in between the lining and my front of my uh, bodice it lines up the waist yay that that was hard <laughs> um but yeah overall that, that went in very nicely um and then I um just hemmed it with a small double hem and now it is done thank god um I don't know if I could, I would have stuck with it if there was a like one other thing to do with this dress. So I will try that on for you, but first let's make the hair accessories. So I'm going to be using resin to make some pieces that I can glue onto hair clips. I'm starting with two skeleton hands. I'm going to brush the knuckles and all the creepy cracks and crevices with black mica powder. Then I'm going to pour in some white resin. I also made a skeleton cameo, which was really cool. It was just too small for a hair clip, but I still really liked it. I also made some black and pink flowers. Unmolding all of these pieces is so satisfying. I was pretty happy with how they came out, but the color just wasn't popping for me, so I'm gonna paint them. I'm also going to be using a flower button that matches the small circular buttons on my cuffs. 
I'm a sucker for sparkles and I like that they match. So I painted all of my resin pieces over with gesso. I also painted my hair clips which were previously silver. I used these new paints that I got at Hobby Lobby. A black deco art enchanted base coat and a magenta glaze and a folk art dragonfly glaze. Since the magenta glaze was not the right shade of pink, I had to change it later but it still was really beautiful. And as for the dragonfly glaze, that shifts from red, violet, and blue, I use that on everything because I'm a niffler at heart and love everything that shines. The skeleton hands were super easy. I just left them white from the gesso and used a watered down black to paint in all the details. I kept it a bright white rather than an off white because I wanted the contrast with my dark hair so people could really tell it was a skeleton hand from far away. So I did a few changes to the flowers off camera. For my black ones, I used some Mod Podge to put some black glitter on it and used the dragonfly glaze in the center. I really liked how this looked. Um, so I kind of put it on a lot of things. On the black, the big black flower um, buttons, I added some of that glaze to the edges and I think that looks really nice. I also added that sheen to my skeleton hands, but I don't know that you can see it on camera, but there's a, a little bit of that sheen on there, very faint. And then for my pink flowers, I had originally put this magenta glaze over some black, and I, it, they were really beautiful. But they didn't really match the dress, they were reading too purple. So I repainted it to a color that matches the pink in the dress pretty closely and then added some glitter and some of that dragonfly glaze. And now I just need to put it together as some type of hair piece. I want to like put something like right here. Um, and this, I mean, was a challenge because I'm not quite sure how I want it, whether I want to put it like individually or make a little like, um, make a big like little thing together and use some felt as a backing. Um, I kind of think I'm going to go with the individual, um, pieces and then kind of just put it in my hair and see that I can have a little bit more flexibility on how I position it. Um, but let's do that now and I'll figure it out as I put it in my hair. Here are the completed hair clips. So I'm finished. I am so happy to be done with this. Um, I added a little velvet um, ribbon to the waist, which I think looks really nice. Um, it fits really well. I mean, I think I could have pinched a little bit more fabric out, um, but I am happy with the fit. I think it looks really nice. I'm glad I made that twill. Um, and even though at the time I was really mad that my other cuff didn't work out, I'm happy with the longer cuff. I think it looks better. It's, it's cooler to have all the puff here and then it's just the, whole, the, the slimmer um, sleeve on the arm. I think it looks nice that way. Um, at the time I wanted to tear my hair out because I did not want to do it again, um, but I'm glad I did. I really like uh, my little hair accessories. I think they came out pretty well. Um, the hot glue is not maybe the best thing to attach these things to. A lot of them fell off and I had to re-glue them. I'm probably gonna put um, a stronger glue on my clips before the actual day. And, but overall, super happy and it's getting me into the Halloween spirit. I can't wait to do another Halloween DIY. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you'll join me again. Have a great Halloween season. Mm -hmm.